Hey, I'm Scott. Kevin so Serbo gets left behind oh, I'm again. Sorry, like, new format left. Hey, before we get started, let me just say congratulations yeah, so. to the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles, number one in their division. So for all of you at home, I am not a big sports fan, but I will always root for whoever the Philadelphia team is. So fly, Eagles, fly. <laughs> All right, so what's going on with Kevin Sorbo, as if as if anybody should care? Yeah, right. Um, so Kevin Sorbo is um, starring in another Left Behind movie. Um, not that he's previously starred in a Left Behind movie, but there's another Left Behind movie in which he is starring. Um, and I'm kind of confused by this because it's it it's not like canonical toward you know for the books. Right. So I'm not really sure if you've if anybody's read the books, like where exactly this is, like what time frame it's covering, if it's even canonical in the slightest. Um, but right. it is meant to be a a uh a, a, not a syllabus, um that 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 were sequel mm. uh to the, the left behind uh dumpster fire that starred Nicolas Cage back in what, twenty fourteen? Right. And then Kirk Cameron before that, right? And and yeah, and like the the series uh -huh. before that, which I've only seen fleeting glimpses of, but yeah, you know, yeah, Kirk Cameron was all over that thing. Why can't we just leave behind left behind? I don't know. Jeez. Uh, um, especially because like my my first problem with it is is a theological problem. Okay. Which you'd think it was the Kevin Sorbo thing. Well, um yes, but... that's my problem with it. But okay. Um, but like my first problem was it was just, it was just theologically because Kevin Sorbo says this is like you know when the read when you read the Bible it sort of predicted all these things that are happening down this road right now um, and it's like there's this whole like you know end times thing like that that's a very specific interpretation of the Bible and yeah. is not reflective of Christianity across the planet um, and right. this kind of obsession with this sort of thing it really is like part and parcel to you know, when I when I talk about American evangelicalism, like constantly, like yeah. it really is part of that, you know, and so it, it, it that vexes me. But that might be why, like. This movie, along with so many other piles of, of Christian trash mm -hmm. are being made as trash. Yeah. Um, like, why do you think it is that um, the end times is such popular fodder? for Christian entertainment. Is it just because like, that's the only part of the Bible where like, like we can li literally bring science fiction to life, like dragons and fires <laughs> and apocalypses and, and, you know, plagues and all, you know, how well, you know, I mean, if I, mean, I, I, I can't really think, I mean, the, of great special effects in these movies, but you yeah, know, you know, to like make it like a good sci-fi thing. Um, but I mean, yeah. there, I guess there's something there, but I think mean, there's, there is this kind of, um, you know, bug, if you want to call it in like mm -hmm. the Christian imagination, um, where there's this kind of obsession with like the apocalyptic images in the Bible. Um, yeah. although apocalyptic literature is its own thing. And I right. don't think that many people know how to handle it well. And when I say many people, I mean like scholars, right. You know, um, because there are scholars that like they dig into this stuff. Because it is complicated. It's it is, you know it's a yeah. thousands of years old, you know, uh, you know genre of writing that we are not accustomed to. But I yeah. think there is also like the like because like we we have that you know eschatological hope you know big fancy word right that yeah. you know, we are looking toward you know like the end where we were looking for you know toward you know the new heavens and the new earth and so right this kind of movie it really feeds into that desire yeah. To like to right. see that happen, of course, like the, the, this kind of like left behind nonsense is like the worst possible testimony of God in that process, though, I think, too. Right. Yeah. I, I, my favorite part of what you just said is like the idea of so many people who think like, like, oh, I need the end times to come because the promise of heaven is right on the other side right. of that. Right. Yeah. So confident that they are going to be on the heaven side of that and not thinking for a moment that the possibility exists that they'll confront Jesus and Jesus will say, I never knew you. Yeah. I you mean, know? like these, I mean, this along with basically most every other Christian movie ever made is just yeah. you know, like that whole preaching to the choir problem. 
Yeah. But then like once I kind of moved past that, like my problem was, well, this is just going to be more low budget, poorly acted schlock. Right. Um, and that just and as somebody who likes movies and you know, just really like loves visual storytelling. Um, yeah, that annoys me. Like, why mm-hmm. can't Christians just, you know, you know, gird their loins like a man, as it says in the book of Job and yeah. make a real freaking movie for once? Yeah, I there's this um, there's a misconception in um, let's call it the suburbs of Hollywood. Right. If we call Hollywood like the A-list, right, mm-hmm. the big name actors, the big name directors, the big name producers, the big name special effects houses. Right. So there's Hollywood. Then what I think of as of the suburbs of Hollywood, like B movies, Mm -hmm. the B teams, the B producers, the B directors. Right. And there's this there's this misconception that like, oh, if I had the kind of money James Cameron had, I could make that movie. (laughs) Oh, if I had the kind of money to bring in the A-list actors, I could make that kind of movie. But it's like, no, 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 no. Because if you had great ideas, it doesn't matter how much money you have that that great movie would find a home somewhere, whether it's in an art house, whether it's kind of in a medium venue, or whether it's an international stage. You know, the, the good ideas always went out. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's always funny when, like, like, oh, man, we this is going to be awesome for a Christian movie, right? Yeah, and that's and, never the case. Right. And the thing is, is I think people might listen to us and get the idea that we think all Christian entertainment is bad. And I don't, because one of my favorite movies about, um, I think nowadays we might not call it End Times, but at the mm-hmm. time it was about, is it End Times movie? I think today we might call it more dystopian, okay. right? But there was a movie with Demi Moore called The Seventh Seal. Oh, yeah. And it was a really well done movie, and it, it was about, you know, the end times, and there were definitely hints that we are looking at, you know, uh, Jesus the Messiah coming back to... to, to um, to uh to finish things yeah you know? yeah so it's, it's not that we think that christian entertainment or christian stories are bad it's that we think they're really bad storytellers <laughs> okay okay well, okay okay well, you know yeah, that, that's i mean that's that's the problem is like we we have yeah. we have movies that are christian movies and we have movies that just are just movies that have christian stuff in it right or you know at least tangentially christian related i'm like constantine yeah. is yeah ever so you know obliquely you know related to christian stuff yeah. um but it's still part of like thematically it's part of that world and so it makes right. sense yeah definitely all right so how does this break the church mark okay so my basic case you know it's maybe you'll completely disagree and hey if you do cool um <laughs> but really you know what i'm thinking is that um you know Christian themes, messages, um, ideas, philosophies, whatever, like just that whole ball of stuff is relevant beyond just Christians in the same way that like, you know, you have uh, like Buddhist wisdom is relevant beyond just people who practice Buddhism. Sure. You know, math is relevant to people beyond, you know, Pythagoras and so on. Right. Like there's more to Christianity than just, you know, this being the religion of whack jobs or something like right. there's a lot that we have to say on various subjects that we can communicate. Um, most importantly, I mean, you know, in terms of scripture, right. It would be like the gospel would be like, you know, like being, you know, the great commission, you know, going out and making disciples. Um, yeah. But these movies due to the fact that they are preaching in the choir type of things and that they have this bad tendency of being super preachy. Mm-hmm. And like we talked about with uh, in one episode, we were talking about God's not dead. One of right. them. I can't remember which one we were talking about. Number 23. So many. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's like they tend to character, you know, make these horrible caricatures of even Christians, but especially non-Christians. Yeah. Um, which makes stuff like this almost an anti-gospel. Mm, that's really interesting. You know, um, but, yeah. so, so that's, so that's, that's my take. It's just that it's like, it, it, it isolates what like you know, what and who we are and just it actively pushes away people that we would want to reach out and say no this is what we actually believe about stuff yeah no i totally disagree <laughs> all right <laughs> no 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 i absolutely agree that um the way we tell stories makes it kind of very black and white that we're either telling these stories to preach to the choir 
or we are telling these stories because these these stories have universal application. Mm-hmm. And you know the story is told well when anybody from any walk of life watches it and doesn't get mad, right? They can go, oh, right. that's interesting. That that gives me something to think about, right? And so without a doubt, like, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you 100% on, on that. You know, but it's interesting that you talk about the caricature because, like, when we look at Kevin Sorbo, going back to the the, the headline here, when we look at his career— his, his career in the Christian entertainment industry is nothing but a bunch of caricatures. It is that uh-huh. same stiff-jawed um, uh, slice of America, um, unyielding rock-solid faith, you know, <laughs> but, still, but still kind of like um, this kind of all shucks humility kind of thing, you know, or, or maybe like that kind of stonewash kind of gruffness. It's always that guy. In like I, I'm looking at his IMDb here, it's a million miles long of the same character in the same Christian movie over and over and over again. Oh yeah, and there was one, and I, I I wrote down the name and I deleted it for some reason. Um, it was like uh, it was what Revelation Road or something like that. Okay, like the Black Rider, and yeah. it features Kevin Sorbo playing some kind of just horribly. St- type of villain right. like like wearing fake sheep skins you know oh um loudly yelling like having people fight to the death it, it, it just i've seen some excerpts of the movie and it's just awful 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 goofiness it's yeah. the kind of thing that like you watch yeah. um after getting pretty well drunk and or stoned because that's the only way you can maintain your attention yeah yeah, I like the word that you used in your notes here. Uh, you called it anti-evangelism. Yeah. Like, tell me what you mean by that. Well, it's like, you know, we we have a strong, you know, evangelical strain in our in our faith. Um, yeah. And that's not just like using the term like the way, you know, like NPR uses the term. Like, they talk about evangelicals as like a specific group of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like evangelical just being like our, our urge to, you know, to reach out with, what we believe and should just right. share it with others. Yeah. Not necessarily going out and being like, you know, an evangelist like Billy Graham or, you know, right. Somebody else like, but just like, at least with like our friends, family, coworkers, people that were around on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. Whereas this makes somebody want to tune out because this yeah. stuff is su- of such low quality. Like I can't watch it. And I, you know, I believe at least reasonably close to what the people making this movie believe. Yeah. You know, in terms of believing in Jesus and whatnot. So it's like, I want to tune out from whatever you're trying to communicate. And yeah. that's a problem. Do you remember, I'm, I mean, I'm sure you remember the Star Wars movies. A little bit. Yeah. Right. George, George Lucas. And w- when he gave early interviews, like, why do you think that that Star Wars was such a success and resonated with so many people and became the, the, um, the, the powerhouse that it is. Yeah. yeah. He would always talk about, well, the reason that people instantly got this is because I wrote every character as an archetype. Like, so every single character, you knew exactly what their part of the story was, mm-hmm. in the story was. And I I feel like these Christian directors making these Christian movies and TV shows today are trying to emulate that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, well, it worked for George, and it's worked over all of time and all the storytelling, but the fine line they crossed is the archetype that they created was the archetype of be this or you're not one of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's an exclusionary archetype. Yeah. Right. And so I think that, I think that's my way of thinking about what you just, what Mm -hmm. you just said there. And for once fully agreeing with you, (laughs) this will never happen again. (laughs) All right, so how do we fix the problem? Okay, so, you know, my, I guess, I mean, I, there's I, something I should have put in my notes is that, you know, like, first of all, like, Christians, like, we shouldn't cooperate with this kind of tomfoolery. <laughs> um, we do not negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, because, like, so many Christians are going out and consume this media because it's the Christian media that's available to them. You know, like, there are people who will not watch you know, like secular shows. So they're not going to watch, 
the West Wing, for instance. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, do yeah. not blaspheme the West Wing. Um, do not blaspheme the West Wing. Yeah, but it's like they want to know that whatever they're going to be watching with their kids is going to be safe. They don't want to have to go to some website and look up, okay, where are all the cuss words and is there any side nudity or whatever? You know, like they don't want to have yeah. to deal with that. So I get the urge to to flee to something like Pure Flix or whatever that nightmare that, uh, you know. Uh, Candace, can't remember. Oh, thank don't you. even get me started. Don't uh, Moving on. Moving yeah. on. So yeah. like I get I get that impulse, but it's it's not good quality. So right. you know we you know if you're gonna be the kind of person that only wants to consume that kind of media, you should be engaging with the people making it mm -hmm. and demanding higher quality from it. You know, not just good looking camera shots, but like good writing, good acting, and and having the writing not being stilted, not using these exclusionary archetypes that you mentioned yeah. before. Um, but then like they, the, the people in the Christian industry who, I mean, maybe some of them feel like they've been affronted by, you know, Hollywood. Um, oh. but let's, let's face it. Christian writers, uh, you know, screenwriters need to be able to play nice and Christian yeah. talent needs to be able to play nice with Hollywood and, you know, be there because, you know, we've seen Kevin Sorbo and Hercules and. He was fine. Right. He was very enjoyable. Right. Or that other show that I can't remember. Like he rode a motorcycle or something, or maybe uh, I'm thinking I of mean, Highlander. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like a ghost rider? What? Uh, it was in the nineties, man. Yeah. I'm happy I can remember anything about the nineties anymore. Right. Um, hey, before you move on, let me just say yeah. this. Um, like what you were just talking about, about learning how to play nicely with people. Mm -hmm. Neil deGrasse Tyson actually has a great story about this, about how people of faith, um, you know, they believe a lot. And then every time science comes and explains something, um, we go, okay, well, that's great. Science explains that. And then what's left over is God, right? And so mm -hmm. what is God is this constantly diminishing thing. And it kind of feels the same as what you're talking about. Mm. Like, where And, like, it doesn't need to be that way. Like, these Christian movies don't have to be a closing circle of, let's just preach to the choir. Let's just make sure that we're keeping our core constituents happy. It can actually be an expanding circle. It can actually be inclusionary. Yeah. It can actually reach out if done well, you know, it's just a matter of, of putting the work in to not write a lazy story and not direct a lazy story and not produce it and yeah. hire lazy storytellers. Right. It actually takes the effort and the willpower to do it. Mm -hmm. And I th and that's really like where I wanted to end this, right? Because like, yeah. you know, one of my favorite, you know, movies of redemption is going to be The Apostles from 1997. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a, little, movie. it's a little older, but I mean, it's less than 30 years old. So I mean, it's, that's still yeah. reasonable to me, you know, but it's yeah. a fantastic movie and it is chock full of Christian. It's a very Christian movie from mm -hmm. top to bottom. Um, yeah. And you know what? It manages never to preach at the audience and it manages never to tell you as an audience member that you're an a-hole because, you know, you aren't a, a believer. It is yeah. a story of redemption and action. It's magnificent. Mm -hmm. And yep. then in what, 2010, right? It was, uh, you know, we had Book of Eli. Right. And Book of Eli, you know, like on the first watch, like you might miss it. But on mm -hmm. a subsequent watch, like after you kind of realize just like, the, the, the insanity of it. You're like, yeah. oh my, like this, this character and, you know, Denzel Washington is a man of faith as I understand it. Yep. Like, you know, it's like he is powered by faith and probably blind or legally blind the entire time. Right. I mean, it just, it's awesome. Like that trusting in God, that, that maintaining, that protecting the word of the Bible, right? Like that's some cool Christian stuff. And that movie had a, wide wide appeal like right it can be done absolutely and i think that's a great place to end it right there is that it it's it can be done if mm -hmm. you have the right storyteller and the right story and you can sell the vision it can absolutely be done yep yep so this is church is lame uh you know mark and i get together because we love the church and we're just here to kind of document crazy things that Christians and uh, Christian leaders do that kind of break the perception of the entire body. Um, 
So, if you have something to say, we'd love to hear it. What do you think about the Christian entertainment industry? Leave it down in the comments. Um, you know, and do all those things. Click and subscribe and click notifications bell and do all that clicky stuff. And if you're listening to this podcast, by all means, uh, shoot us a let, uh, an email at churcheslanepodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to uh, subscribe and leave us a review over at uh, Apple Podcasts. And with that, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.